Hi everybody, Mike Reese. Just going to be talking about doing my martial arts chat here, and today it's about the plague of what's going on in martial arts, it seems. You'll find it on forums, blogs, chat, just uh, different types of uh, social media where people are talking about it. Uh, you know, YouTube, Facebook pages, you know, Facebook groups, things like that. You're going to find this plague everywhere. And the plague is, everyone believes their opinion is the fact, when it's just an opinion. I mean, even these videos that I make are just opinions. They're my point of view of the martial arts from a point of view of someone who's been in it for a very long time and who's been around this community for a long time and seen a lot of different things. And, you know, it still seems to be the same problems that we've had for decades you know, my style is better than your style, this system is better than that system, we're doing it right, you're doing it wrong. These kind of opinions are, they're just troublesome for the, for the martial arts in my opinion. I don't believe, like I said, it's my opinion. I don't believe that these are healthy because what they're doing is they're driving wedges within everybody. And I know what it is, a part of it. A part of it is some people have dedicated a lot of time to their art and they don't want anyone telling them that all the time that you spent in your art, the art that you have done, spent 10, 15, 20, 30 years maybe doing your art, no one wants to hear, well, all that time you've been doing it wrong and you are wrong. Time, money, sweat, tears, defending constantly being there, seeing it for yourself, knowing that it's right, or you feel at least it's right for you, that's not something that people are going to take very lightly. You're not going to just overnight, or especially you're not going to tell people that's just how it is. They're not going to buy into that. Uh, then there's the whole de debate about uh, prof you know, professional fighters to not professional fighters being the best fighters and things of that nature. It's been a long time debate. I mean, it's been around for a very long time. And uh, I don't know. I guess I've never bought into you need to be, you, you can be so dangerous that you can't compete. And I've never been to the point where only competition is all you need to understand the difference between, because there is a difference between combat and there's a difference between combat and street fighting and combat and sport fighting and street fighting and sport fighting. Those are all very different entities. Um, a woman being attacked in the street by a larger male, uh, blitzing her onto the street and smashing her to the ground and having to react from that moment rather than facing off with a male that might be in her uh, weight category or even if he's heavier uh, with a friendly or competi uh, competitive uh, grappling match that's that's really still a very different entity uh, it's because the it's because there's too many variables that are unknown in the street fight kind of scenario in combat so when you look at it from different these different angles you can see that there's really no the the only constant there can be is solid training just you training to be the best you you can be you being the smart one out of the whole group you finding that mo moment or whether you live or die whether you win or lose whether you survive and in escape these are those are the moments that you're looking for in these uh, encounters and you're not looking for uh, you're not looking for it the same way every time. So, but you, but the way you train and the way you do things, the smarter you are about it, the way you research, the way you go into things, it, that that's really going to be, you know, how you test yourself. These are the things that you're going to learn. This is how you learn. But I find that the plague of it is, is that's still there. There's this, still this stigma of completely everyone having their own opinion which is great but then them trying to take that opinion of their system being the best because of scientific reasons and 
pushing it into the face of everyone else and saying, this is absolute. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of guys that believe that there's, you can't learn from a video, uh, like the video courses or online courses. I disbelieve that. I don't believe that. I believe you can. Do I believe that they're going to produce, uh, like, they're going to have the, these high numbers of people that are going to come out of those programs, and they're going to be really awesome, and they're going to be great, uh, or they're going to be really troubled, or they're going to be really struggle with the stuff that they know. I say they're going to have numbers that are going to struggle, but I say the same thing for large schools. In group training, you're never going to have the same type of people coming out. You're going to have the same kind of numbers coming out of those. Or maybe your hires of better, you know, higher skilled people might come out from that compared to people that are doing online or at home studies. But I do not believe that it's going to be that much higher, and I do not believe that you're not going to have crap coming out of those schools as much as you would just out of online. Uh, the online and home study is if you're not disciplined, you shouldn't do it. If you have no motivation, you shouldn't do it because what you're going to do is you're going to just shorten it. And if, you're, they, if these schools are doing these online things, most of them have actually pretty decently regulated types of uh, ranking. So it's not like it's overly, it's like they just go, oh, here's my fee and there, I'm tested for this belt. They actually want to see your test. They actually want to see you. And they can say, no, you don't move on. Now, they can just move you on anyway, but I've seen that in big schools where you physically go there. So it's an opinion whether or not the online and not online works. Uh, you know, I, I just believe that they both work. And I believe you need, I honestly believe you could utilize both. I really don't think you should stay only on online training. I think you should use online training if you need to, uh, if that's the best you can do, but get a partner, get someone to do this with you uh, because you can't do the techniques correctly if you're by yourself all the time. Um, you, you can't do it correctly if you only watch the tape one time. You can't, I say tape, I'm dating myself. Not like in a physical I love you sense of dating, but dating as far as my age. Right, creepy. We have this, but again, we're coming, we just have this big problem that we're just, we, we believe that we have this thing. And I, the reason why I put scientific quotation marks is because there's, um, you really can't be a biased uh, or a, an unbiased, that's what I mean, unbiased opinion in whether or not something works or not if you are at a school that has already taught you that what you're looking at won't work for real violence and they've basically systematically shown you what violence really looks like even though it it has semblance of real violence and it's probably maybe more real than the scenarios you see in most schools but it's not it's still not real violence and not only is it not real violence sometimes those attacks are that's not how people attack it's how maybe some crazy somebody can attack, sure, but it's not how everyone attacks, and it's not how the vast majority of people attack. Whether you want to believe that or not, it's that's up to you. It's just not how it's done. Um, so, but that's what I mean. There's too many. You need to have for a scientific project. You need to have an unbiased opinion. You must have a theory of whether it, something is a viable theory of it's supposed to do this or do that it's supposed to have like an actual con an actual precise reason like what it's supposed to do so and then you're supposed to have an actual controlled subject you're supposed to have at least th like three or four controlled areas here controlled which means they have to be they can't come into some sort of uh Basically, when it comes to martial arts, you can't have your opinion already set for you. You have to have, basically, your mind open to whether it's going to work or not. I want to see if it works. You have to have everyone, or and then you have to have people that are in there that are trained, not trained, and people who are semi-trained, which is basically people who have a skill set, perhaps, uh, but uh, aren't like trained soldiers or trained martial artists or something like that. And you've got to see who it works for. 
and then you've got to take the side. You can't just say, well, it, it works. And then you've got to say, take the trained people from the thing that you're saying will not work or, can't, or it may or may not work from. You got to show it to the from the pers from different perspectives. If you get if you get uh, saying that uh, it only works for black belts, then you got to get black, you got to get all sorts of different black belts to line that out. It's like there's no way to do that though for martial arts. There's no way to actually set this complete and total, utter complete science behind what we do because there's just too many variables, too many variables to set an actual control. And the reason why I say that is because it's not like you're making something or genetically doing something. You're trying to say scientifically, this is how it's always going to work at every single stop, every single time. And there's just too many variables when it comes to how people move when you physically move, the the body shape, the shape you're in, the training you've had, the experiences you have, the uh, just all these different types of variables. There's too many variables that fall in line when it comes to a self-defense type thing to call it science. Okay, now you can say that this works more than not because it works with the actual body reflexes. This works with body reflex, this works with that kind of reaction. This can actually be honed and then, but then you start realizing that you can start moving in different ways after you've trained. You've trained one way so often that your body instinctively flinches a different way than another human being. Some people flinch by putting their hands out, their head back, and they've got their eyes closed, and they're doing this when they're afraid. Shoving away the fear, shoving away the thing that might be at, you know, attacking them, you know, the thing that they're scared of, pushing it away. Uh, you know, something that hurts, you either jerk widely away or something like that. And then there's people, if, if you've trained, you know, something scares you, you might cover up or you might cover in closer to yourself because your whole thing is I'm going to get keep everything tight in to defend myself, but I'm getting in to where I can get in close to whatever's making me scared so I can destroy it. I can attack it. I'm not going to run away from it. This is a flight response. I'm getting away and backing away. This is not a fight response. A fight response is you're covering up you might put your hands up and you might go forward instead of back. That's a trained response though. You have to train these things. So there's really no way of going, yeah, that's scientific, blah, blah, blah. Your, your opinion about it is already biased. The people that you're training with have either been with you long enough that their opinion's probably biased. And then you're telling everyone that this isn't going to work right away, automatically setting in their head psychologically, that that's not going to work. Okay, put it in context, and then you got to take it from an actual source that says it. Anyways, that's all scientific stuff, right? But that's still—that's what I mean. It's still an opinion. It's not yet a set fact. There's no way you're going to set that as an actual fact that that'll never work because it's actually worked for someone at one time. If someone says it worked for me, oh, it, well, I've used it. I've used it on more than one occasion. I've done that, you know, uh, to defend myself. Uh, you know, I'm in security or I'm in corrections or I'm a police officer or whatever and then they use that to protect themselves you can't tell them it doesn't work because it, it worked for them uh, even if, especially if it's worked more than once you, you can't tell someone that you can't do this block or do this move or do that do this because it didn't work even though it's worked for them why because they've trained it and they've worked with it and they have experience with it T. not coffee today man Anyway, so that's what I mean about, like, and, like, when people talk about how the body moves. If I hit you this way, if I hit the body this way, it's going to move this way. Now, you can say it's going to move generally in that direction, but then you're also forgetting that when you hit the body, when you're just testing with your subjects, you hit the body, say you hit the shoulder, and it spins them. When you're doing this in a dojo or at your school, you hit that shoulder, they do spin, but they turn their body, or at least they will feel it, they spin that way, they turn their body, but they don't move their feet. Why? Because you're not hitting with the, as hard as you're going to hit as if you're in the street or if you're in a real fight. Man, if you go and you just, wow, I mean, just as hard as you can, just as hard and as fast as you can, boom, boom, and I just hit you in the shoulder and I rock that shoulder, not only is this shoulder going to go back, 
but that he's gonna they're gonna step back. That whole side should open up because it's knocking them off balance. So if it's knocking them off balance, the body automatically compensates and steps and tries to get away. And how hard you hit them depends on how fast different steps that they take. Maybe how fast that they react to that shot. They might, you know, double step back away from a different shot that the the follow up shot that you've been trained so many times to do. That's why it's good to just have the concepts and principles down because the techniques in themselves could work. You just need to understand when to apply them at the moment of the need of applying them. And now we get into, see, but that, see, again, it's my, that, those are my opinions. Some people would say that's just not the case. Yet, I, you can't refute really a principle and concept thing. I mean, these are the things that, I mean, if you see it and you watch it, and physically watch it the physical science of it all if you actually watch someone getting hit really hard and seeing them open up or fall over or lose their balance I can say that's true and you can look at it and say it's true and everyone who sees it says it's true okay well they move the same way all the time that's the thing no they will not change they, they will all change it's like everything's a variable here when you're dealing with physical movement and especially in fighting and violence and things like that, you're already dealing with chaos. And when you deal with chaos, it already adds variables and everything. It throws off the order of all things that you believe that you're going to be able to get an actual scientific answer for. It, can't, it won't happen. It's not going to. This is my opinion, of course. That's why I believe that everyone has to look at it from the fact that this is their opinion about it. Don't be sold out already on a subject on self-defense, on, uh, sorry, there's a fly there and don't think it picked it up on the camera. I don't think I'm just freaking out. Don't be, just, don't be sold out completely just because this guy says he was and because he's got the word expert in front of him. People give him those titles. You know, they, you know, some people even give themselves those titles of expert this or master that or she on this or whatever they put there in front of their names. And you can... And sometimes some people, like people who are really just kind of foolish, like honestly, the ignorant masses out there will put that in front of people's names. They will go, hi, that guy's a self-defense expert. The guy's had four classes and he just knows more than you. But yet suddenly he's an expert compared to that guy he is, you know. It's just, so when we, when you got to take it for what it is. It's their opinion. Does it line up with the way you think? Sure. Okay, yeah, I think it lines up with how I think. Okay, well then go further though. Go further on your own. Quit taking it for what it's worth. D don't quit taking it for what they believe it should be worth. They believe their opinion is worth fifteen hundred dollars a day. They believe their their opinions are worth a lot of money. You know, for three day seminars. And, and that's a fact. They, some people believe their opinion is worth two hundred fifty dollars a month for your you to come and learn from them. People believe this because it's their it's what they believe their self worth is. You're buying into their self worth. That's fine. I don't believe that you. That's a bad thing. I, I think that's a. I think if you trust that person, you see what they do, and you believe what you see, you see it, and you're like that. Actually, is really good. You've done it for yourself, and you go that really works for me. It works for what I want it to do. Then it works for you. Now, I have been on here many times saying that there's just some crap stuff out there. And there is. There's a lot of really bad information. And honestly, anybody with common sense or has watched any type of video where someone's being attacked or... Anything like that. If, you, if you've watched TV where they have, you know, cops or they have something like that. When you watch these things, they, they, there's a lot of things that are out there that show people being attacked. That show, you know, that have showed uh, criminal activity. That have showed that kind of stuff in an accurate light. That you can actually make an informed decision of whether or not certain things work or would work. And then you got to ask yourself, okay... How can I get something to work if all else fails? What will work? And sometimes there's more than one option. 
And it's a matter of how long you've trained, how many hours you've trained, how disciplined you are in training, how many times have you tested it. And I don't mean tested it by like you have your students, you know, go at you as hard as they can because, you know, honestly, they're still not going at you as hard as they can. But how many times have you actually pressure tested it under the the real pressures of someone really trying to hit you and you just said, okay, how many times can you hit me? Let's see how many times I can get this from you and go at any time and they just attack you randomly. And as soon as they do, do you, you know, what movement do you get into automatically? What do you, are you automatically doing? Are you standing there waiting for the person to move? Because in a real attack, that person not going to stand there unless you have something like a gun or a knife, and they're just sitting there looking at you, and you're looking at them, and both of you are sitting there going, okay, whoever makes the first move, you know, what is he? What are you doing? This is why I believe competition is still good, and I believe tactical, tactical training and self-defense training as separate entities are still good. Why do I think tactical is different? Is tactical is is more for combative reasons, and I mean that with the, they actually go from hand because if they start out with hand positions they start from hand to hand and go in right into a weapon or a tool that goes into deadly force or they start out with a weapon and they have to go into a hand hand to hand situation or close quarters situation where they have to basically immobilize someone without actually putting them down without actually neutralizing them completely without actually you know shooting on sight you know they're they're their parameters are to secure and restrain or control the situation or whatever that is secure the target move it out and you don't want to just kill everyone that walks in there okay well that those are actual mission parameters but are you able to show people how to move from their weapon to their hands are you showing them force multipliers that are non-lethal as at the same time still combative enough that they need it to work right then and they have to be able to be able to summon these skills up quickly um, how fast can they go from their their hand-to-hand -hand skills to a to a tool that they have uh, which is could be knife gun whatever it is those are combative things those are not civilian things whether people want to say they are they're not they're combative things. those are tactical things those are go to law enforcement armed security uh, which means bodyguard when I say armed security it's like bodyguards executive uh, protection things like that these these high up things that you know so executive protection uh security contracting all that stuff security okay and any armed security guards that are out there need super training okay trust me they don't get anything so they need super training and then uh and also correction officers and you know detention officers and things of that nature as well as and then we have the civilian self-defense courses which is more just self-defense those are the legal things those are the things that civilians do which it may be a concealed carry and you move into a tactical scenario for a concealed carry person or something like that but this is not that kind of thing we're talking about just hand-to-hand -hand or they move to a force multiplier such as pepper spray a coubaton a their keys something that the self-defense you know a civilian is going to be able to use and not go to prison for I mean, it's your responsibility to teach them these things. So, see what I'm saying is, to me, I see these different factors in all these things. I see different things out of all this stuff because these, that's my opinion on how things work. Um, you know, everybody else might see it differently. I don't know. You, you guys might see it that I, I'm just full of crap and that's just what I am. And it's like, that's fine. You know, that's your opinion. I don't, you know, I don't begrudge you your opinion. So, the, here, so that's what I mean. This is, but it's a problem for our martial arts community. And the reason why I say this is because it's caused wedges with everybody. We should be learning from everybody. We should be learning what the MMA guys do so we can better enhance our skill sets to be able to go from standing to clinching to, do, to the floor. So, you know, to, to cover different ra ranges a little bit better. Some people say, we're already doing that. We do them. Okay, that's awesome. But don't say that these guys don't have something to share. Uh, these the guys in the cage they need to look more at the traditional arts so they can see how power generation is a little bit different than what they're taught from some guys that just maybe not understand it as well there's different ways to generate that stuff there's better ways to cut angles there's better ways to do certain things than, than some of these guys are taught 
And they need to see that some of these guys, if you go into the traditional arts, they have that. They have those types of transitions and they have those types of movements that they're looking for, that they need. Uh, you know, so we need to take these examples, and I think even the contactical world needs to look at both of these and say we need both of those, so we can be able to apply the least amount of. We have to be able to expend the least amount of energy with the maximum amount of power and force in one in just a very small space. So I need to be able to learn this stuff as quickly as possible from both sides. You know, I need to learn these things, and that's that's great. Ah, fly. So, instead of that, though, we're too busy fighting. We're too busy infighting, saying that this person, these guys don't know anything. I know all this stuff, and blah, 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 blah. And everybody's just talking about what everyone else believes that they know more than the others. Rather than just saying, just learn from one another and quit being so prideful about it. I know that's just that's breaking into your money at times, I guess, guys. I don't know what it is. I think it's, I think it has something to do with ego, money, and basically straight out ignorance. So those are some factors that we have to look at. We're being ignorant, we're being prideful, and seriously, guys, that's there's a big there's a big problem right there. We're being ignorant about everything around us. And I'm sorry if they're and we're being too greedy, okay? I need this for my school, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The plague of martial arts. It's too much infighting. Too many opinions being called fact. Too many things being overlooked. And us just not wanting to get along because it's just interfering too much with our way of life. Our selfish thoughts, patterns, whatever. You know, and we don't want to be considered lower here, whatever. I mean, it's just, it really is just us being selfish creatures, not being wise enough to realize that there's a, something that we can learn from anybody here. And even though there's been many martial arts, great martial artists that have been out there who've said the same thing, who have gone out and said this publicly to, you know, everyone has heard about it, especially if you're in the martial arts community. You, you've heard it that, you know, just being, you were we should be training and learning from one another, not you know, my style versus your style. Okay. But guys, that's just these are just my opinions. Okay. Tell me what you guys think. You know, tweet me at Michael at TFS Michael Reese on Twitter, or you can follow my Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash freestyle warriors. And you can also leave a comment right here or message me on my channel here. I will get back to you, and that is for a fact, okay? That, and I will talk to you guys. I will see you guys Friday. Friday.